Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So earlier in this week I made like a first impressions video of Critica online and I know a lot of people had like a bunch of negative feedback to give and whatnot and that's cool. I get it. You guys don't like the game. It's fine. But I'm actually really enjoying myself and I wanted to go ahead and explain some of the pros and some of the cons of the game itself. Now I will not be covering the cash shop in this video specifically because I don't see the point in covering a cash shop unless you're actually max level and understand exactly what everything does because otherwise you're just spreading misinformation. So this video is going to mainly focus on like customization, combat, um, I can't really talk too much about endgame but more or less of like if you don't know what Critica is and you want to know a bit about it, this is the video for you. So I've been playing for about four days on and off about anywhere from like four hours a day or so. Um, and you could hit max level in about six days at this rate, playing four hours a day. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Now, the class I'm playing is called a Valkyrie, and the way Critica works is there's four base classes, um, which is pretty much like, it's not really like a real class, it's like your novice. So like for me, it would be a Reaper, and Reaper turns into either Vampire or Valkyrie. And then uh, Warrior, Berserker, sorry, not Berserker, the Warrior class has three, uh, the, the gun class, which is like the mage, has three, I think, as well. There's like 12 classes or something. So, um, let me go ahead and cover some stuff and basically how the base game works. So, your base class, you'll see your base skills. And the way your base skills work, which is basically before level 15, is you get a little bit of skills from each one of your main classes. So, this is my Valkyrie. These are all the skills I have on my Valkyrie. I have two more skills to unlock. These are the skills of Reaper, so it'd be two skills from Valkyrie. Um, which is not really from Valkyrie, but it's like more in line of the Valkyrie skill tree And then these would be two from Vampire, like one of them is a little bit of a heal and whatnot Then you have Awakening skills, where Awakening skills unlock at level 50 And basically what Awakening is, just to put it really simply, is Awakening skills are previous skills that you have So like here would be Reap EX, and this would be Reap And it will do like a retarded amount of damage compared to the normal one so if I look at Reap, Reap can hit for a total of 12k, Reap EX can hit for a total of, if you combine them both, like 50k. So that's an example, and you can see this little gauge here, this is your EX gauge, and this builds up as you fight mobs. And this is pretty cool because your EX skills can be like your ultimate, so for example, one of my hardest hitting skills is like Barbed Wrath, right? My Barbed Wrath has a, you can see here, 40 second cooldown but you can have three charges of your EX gauge. So for example, on a boss fight, I could initiate with Barbed Wrath regular mode, and then I could use the EX version, because the EX version doesn't take the regular cooldown, it's its own separate mechanic. Uh, and that really offers for a bit of customization between how you play your character. You don't really have much customization when it comes to your skills. Uh, you cannot max everything, but you can max like 80% of the skills. But the rotations you use when fighting bosses and mobs is extremely important. Because if not, you're going to get yourself killed, uh, you're going to clear like fucking five times slower than other people, and you're just simply not going to perform as well as other characters of your same class. And that's really important. Also with the awakening skills, a lot of them are passive as well. So for example, uh, this would give me additional, additional like jumps on my regular Omni Slash. This makes it so whenever I stand swap, I get a buff. Um, this one extends the invulnerability frame of one of my main skills and that's pretty cool because you get a lot of kind of flexibility with how you want to play your character. You can simply button mash if you want, you won't really get to end game button mashing because eventually you're going to start dying um, and it's just not going to be as effective. So like an example is like you could hit a boss for like two or 300k or you could properly use a rotation combo and hit for like 1.5 mil as an example. And these are separate points from here. So going over your gear, you've got nine slots of gear. Um, these epics are just simply from quest rewards, so don't worry about it, it's nothing really too crazy. Um, your weapon, you can essentially get new weapons every single time you get to a new area. All you have to do is look for your resistance guy, and you can basically talk with him, and you can buy your rare, well, it's a purple weapon basically for your class, and you have different choices depending on which one you want. It doesn't make too much of a difference. For me, it's like one is more based around attack speed, one is just raw damage. Note that attack speed is one of the most important stats in this game, because it speeds up your animation time, and the reason why that's so important is one, it allows you to go from combo to combo to combo, and two, 
if you have a skill that makes you invulnerable, sometimes there is a delay before your invulnerability hits. Meaning, say you use a skill that charges and lunges and makes you invulnerable during the duration. Well, the invulnerability might not start until the attack actually meets the boss and connects. So that's kind of something that's a little technical that you don't, again, have to worry about early game, but it really makes a difference between good players later on and people that just fucking die and say this game is lame like myself. I mean, what? So, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and clear some content. Now, before I do anything, this is gonna look really easy, and the reason why is I'm just running standard hard mode dungeons. I'm not at end game. Um, I'm not doing anything crazy. And depending on the the instance that you kind of run, the bosses are gonna be different. So, for example, Jade Chasm has a boss that has a immunity shield on him, meaning you have to break down the immunity shield before you can actually fight the boss. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you right away. Now, one thing to note about this game is there is kind of like a fatigue system that a lot of people don't like. I personally don't like it too much, but it's a lot more fair than most games. So if you look at my bar, I have an RP, which is rest points. When you're at your purple gauge, you have a thousand percent rewards, meaning you basically get 10 times bonus drops, 10 times XP and 10 times gold. After you burn um, basically all of it, you go to blue, which gives you 500 percent. And then you go to green, which gives you 100 percent. Um, just based off the style of how the game works, I, I wish they would change it from 100% to like 300%, even if it's not for XP gain, just for drops, because when your rewards are so low at the bottom, you just sometimes don't even get a boss drop, which is a little silly, it's kind of like, oh, oh well, man. Um, but anyway, there's a lot of room to play around with. This doesn't stop you from playing the game, so don't get the wrong idea. You can still play the game, you can still do everything you normally can, it's just at a diminished rate. So let me go ahead and jump right on in. Now, one thing to explain about my class is Valkyries are a bit different. If I hit right click, all of my skills change. This is ranged mode, and this would be melee mode. So you'll see me fl basically flipping between a couple of them as we play. You'll also notice that there are back hits in this game. Back hits do like way more damage than regular hits. So, at least for Valkyries, I don't know if it's like that for every other class. And you can also crit on a back hit, I believe, which just scales the damage even higher and higher. So this guy is an elite that spawns. Elites basically spawn, imagine like you're playing in a regular action role-playing game. If an elite spawns, it has a chance of rolling an affix. So that affix on him that you see right there makes him completely immune to knockdown. You cannot stun the you cannot stun him, you cannot knock him down unless you were to kill him or break his shield. So there are certain skills on your classes that have the ability to break this. So for example, if I were to do this, that's a shield break. And that which is basically, I think it's called breaking ultra status. And that's really important to note as well, because if not, you're just going to get yourself killed. In terms of fluidity and combat, this is honestly one of my favorite games. Um, I remember when I played Vindictus, Vindictus felt really smooth and whatnot as well. And that's one of the main things I liked. So I want to teach you guys something important as well, uh, because most people that play this game are never going to understand this factor that I'm about to show. This is a kind of like, I don't know if it's an elite or a rare mob or whatever it is. But I want to use this guy as an example for something because certain bosses and rare mobs and elites that you fight will have significantly higher stun resistance than most. So if you notice when I'm attacking most mobs, they're stunned continuously. They never basically ever get out of anything. I'm going to go ahead and hit this character, this guy with a stun. Watch how fast he recovers out of it. Did you see that? I basically stunned him and turned him around and he immediately, he immediately just went right back into attack mode. And that's really cool because you basically can't face roll everything. Because if you were to just go in slashing doing nothing, this guy would just, just one shot you basically. He would combo you back and you would die. Whereas opposed to something like this, I'll use the exact same skill. Watch how long they're stunned for. You see? It's a completely different world uh, when you're fighting certain mobs. And a lot of this doesn't really take into account until further on into the game. Which is kind of cool because otherwise people would get like way too stressed out because they'd be like, what the fuck is even going on? Um, and I really like that about the game because there is a little bit of uh, difficulty aspect to it. Especially later on when you're doing like insane modes and whatnot. And there's another thing that I didn't even enable which is basically encounters or invasions. So in every area you'll see there's like a side zone. So if you were to look at the map at the top right, there's a zone in this area that does not connect to the boss. And in that area... 
if you were to basically use an item, you could fight kind of like an invasion boss, and it's basically harder than a regular boss. It's like fighting a fucking super boss, uh, and it'll have ridiculous amounts of health, along with just an insane kit um, of abilities and whatnot, which is pretty cool. So one of the things I don't like about this game is party play. When you play in party play, there's basically no penalty. Uh, I think monsters get scaled up a little bit, like a little bit in terms of health. But when you just play with more people, you do so much more damage, it doesn't even matter. But the biggest issue I have with party play is it feels like you can't really play your class properly a lot of the time. You pretty much have to completely adjust the way you play your character. And the reason why is because monsters are just being juggled left and right. Animations are flying left and right. It's difficult to see, but I do believe they're implementing... Oh shit. Oh shit. I do believe they're implementing, uh, or they they will have, um, like a toggle for that so you can turn it off. But still, it just feels way too cheese with a bunch of people. It feels like you take all the skill out of the game. And people told me this does change later on in the game as well, at max level content, which I still, I don't really know yet. So another example of stun locking is if a target, specifically like an elite mob like that guy, is doing an animation or even a boss, you cannot stun a target out of its animation. So if someone is channeling something, you cannot stun them. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Unless, again, there's some really retarded skills that I don't know about. Um, and this makes you really have to pay attention to your timing. Because if you were to use an immunity, for example, right? A lot of skills, well, I don't know about a lot of skills, but this class specifically does have quite a few abilities that make me immune. But what difference does it make if I immune an attack during a channel, and then my immunity goes away and I'm still in the channeled ability? Nothing. I take damage and fall over. Um, so that's something as well that's pretty cool as well. That you really have to just pay attention to what's going on. Okay, so this would be a boss fight. So you can see at the bottom, basically this thing right here is a stun gauge, that red bar. And what that stun gauge means is you cannot stun the boss until you break down that bar. And once that bar is broken, it'll rapidly start to heal up. And when it heals up, you basically have to do it all over again. Furthermore, when you're fighting bosses, they have like an enrage almost. And if you stun them for too long, it's like a set amount of time, they'll just break it and immediately go enraged. And they'll do like a one hit KO, which you pretty much have to dodge. Not everyone does that, uh, but it's one thing to take into account, which kind of adds a little bit more in depth. It basically punishes you for doing shit rotations. Because if you do something correctly, let me see if I can try to do it here, you could burst down weak bosses like this guy very, very quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do that now. So let's do combo one. And he would die. Now this is a weaker guy, like I said. Um, if I were to be doing this on insane, he would have maybe seven times the health, something like that. This dungeon is a bit weaker than me as well. It's on the lower, lower level side. But it's an example of what you can do if you properly combo. So that was like a 1.7 million hit. I'm sure you didn't see anything like that when I was fighting the monsters. And that's again, that's through basically proper buff rotations and whatnot. Um, and you don't typically get numbers like that until you hit your EX abilities. Your EX abilities are super, super strong if used properly. So now I want to go ahead and explain a little bit about some other stuff. Um, you do have titles in this game and titles are pretty cool because even though your RP, you know, basically you get to 100% and you're playing at one tenth the rate of other people, there's like challenges to complete. So if you look at your quests, you can see that by completing a set of titles in the, like in the zone, it's not really a quest, I don't know how to explain it. Um, basically this would be a zone. This is another zone, this is another zone, etc. By completing all the achievements in there, you get titles and when you complete the set of titles, you actually get like permanent stats to your character. So achievements basically give you stats. So that's something else you can do when you run out of RP. You can go ahead and start achievement hunting because it won't really punish you. There's also a bunch of in-depth stuff and this is where it may get into the pay to win aspect and this is where I don't really know yet because you have things like, uh, where is it? I don't even know where they are specifically. There's like a bunch of stats on gear and your stats can be rerolled through items that you acquire, but you get them through grinding as well. And that's for like all the gear and whatnot. Um, as for enchanting, your gear doesn't ever break, which is really fucking cool. I love, I love the systems like that where your gear doesn't break. It just has a retardedly low chance to work, but you can still keep throwing shit at it over and over and over. So you don't have to worry about that. I know back in the back in the past when I used to play free-to-play games, 
you basically had to use cash shop items to prevent things from breaking. And that was my biggest concern in a lot of free to play games where if you want to basically put your character to the max, you have to put a retarded amount of money in every single time you get new gear. And that doesn't seem to be the case, which I'm very, very pleased about. Uh, what else do we have to go over? There's also Ether Force, which I think is like Paragon. I don't really know anything about that yet. Then there is costumes in this game, which is really important as well. Costumes, uh, this is all given to you for free. I haven't put any money into the game at all, by the way. I'm 100% free to play. I didn't get anything special from the developers. I just have a standard key like you guys. I'm not even on this elite status, which is, I think, like a subscription. Um, guilds will offer, I think you can, basically by running in guilds, you get these bonus points that you can use towards VIP membership. So guilds are something really important to take into account. But the way costumes work is costumes essentially have stats that you basically pick. So there's like one of three stats on each piece of costume. It's always the same except for the costume itself. Um, the costume basically, like a headpiece rolls the same one. Gloves rolls the same one. Does that make sense? Um, so like everyone's pair of gloves would have the same stat, but that doesn't mean your chest piece would have the same stat as your gloves. It's different. And then from there, you socket badges, I think, in, I don't know exactly what it is, kind of fucking complicated, but you basically uh, upgrade your, your costume over and over, and it gives you like pretty insane stats. I don't know how Cash Shop will work with this either. This is something you guys might want to link into if you really want to like go the extra mile. Um, but this is something that I believe you need to PVP for. To get like higher tier costumes, I think it's pretty much gated through PVP content uh, or PVP dailies. Same thing with the badges here that basically gives you buffs. Um, and this I just can't really speak too much on because I don't really know it yet. And hopefully I can get this information to you in the next couple days because we should be hitting max level tomorrow at 65. Anyway though, that's pretty much about it. Uh, one other thing to note that's pretty cool is if you do basically opt in and get the VIP membership, you get a skill reset every single day. So that's pretty cool too. You don't really have to worry about that. And as you level up, I think you get three respects or two respects while you're leveling. Um, so you get to play around a little bit with that. But the respec every single day is also really cool. So like some of the main concerns I have when I play video games is, you know, is the upgrading retarded? Do I have to spend fucking $6,000 to just get max gear? Doesn't seem like it in this game. So that's good. Skill reset, am I gonna get punished basically for having to pay 20 bucks to reset my character? No, so those are two things that are really good for me. And the grinding, even though it is at an extremely diminished rate, I can still grind. Like I said, I wish they would increase it to like 300% or something, but I think you still get pretty good rewards from running it on insane. Um, so overall, I'm pretty happy with the game. Compared to what people were telling me before, it doesn't really seem anywhere near as extreme as what people said. But of course, we have to wait for the final release to see exactly what happens. Anyway, I hope this cleared up some information for you guys. Um, if it didn't, well, feels bad, Dan. I know it was a bit kind of jumbled and put together pretty quickly. But anyway, that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys have a wonderful time, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.